Thank you, thank you, Abhishek. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm really sorry that we cannot do this in presence, and I hope that soon we will be able to, to do this the conference in presence. And uh, I'm looking forward for my next visit to Bangalore, when there will be a new new occasion. I, I always had a very good time there. Um, listening to the conference of yesterday, to the uh, talks of yesterday, I realized that probably my talk is a bit of a different uh, style because it will be more on the mathematical side. Uh, I, hope, I hope this is still uh, of your interest. This is some work I've done in collaboration, a program that I started with Anna De Masi and then more recently with Lu Xu and Stefano Marchesani, at least for the, in the hyperbolic scaling. Um, the basic uh, uh, idea comes from uh, the fact that uh, instead of uh, willing to um, obtain an hydrodynamic equation, that uh, a PDE that uh, describes the evolution of the conserved quantities, uh, here we want to uh, obtain directly from the microscopic uh, uh, dynamics the quasi-static transformation that uh, are part of uh, uh, the thermodynamics. Uh, the thermodynamics use this quasi-static transformation. Basically, the idea is that you change the boundary conditions uh, of the system very slowly uh, as a, in, a, in a scale which is slower than the time, typical time scale of conversion to equilibrium. And you look at the system at this large time scale and of course the system has to be big, so the space-time scale is very important, and we will insist continuously in this, uh, in this uh, talk. Uh, and then we want to see the system, which is very close to equilibrium, but in fact changes with equilibrium, changes in time. Uh, there was this uh, very inspiring uh, uh, phrase by Oscar Lanford. Uh, he was writing uh, toward these last uh, years, uh, he was writing a book about mathematical statistical mechanics. Um, unfortunately, uh, he didn't complete the book. Uh, the uh, notes were available in his website. Then uh, the website was taken off, with the, the, the website at the ATH in uh, Ginevra. Then it was taken off, and uh, uh, they looked like they were lost. But uh, I, I fortunately saved the copy in my my computer and there are a lot of interesting uh, remarks and one was exactly about uh, how to derive directly uh, how to uh, define directly uh, quasi static transformation uh, and it, it says that this is the, basically is like deriving or, or should be considered like a, an axiom of thermodynamics like the first law or the second law and so on or the zero law uh, Okay, let, oh, so sorry to move here. Uh, so this is what, what basically what I said before. We are, cons we are considering situation where uh, uh, um, the, where the uh, the time scale where the boundary condition changes much lower. So that means in a larger time scale than the than the typical relaxation time scale of the bulk dynamics. And we are interested, of course, in situations where the bulk, in the double dynamics there are conserved quantities, density, energy, and so on. So in this very large uh, quasi-static time scale, the system is always very close to the global equilibrium, corresponding to the time-varying parameters applied to the boundaries. Uh, but uh, uh, so this is, uh, this is what would be an evolution of equilibrium state. But in fact, we are more interested in evolution of non-equilibrium stationary state. So we want to go beyond the transformation from one equilibrium, a quasi-static transformation from one equilibrium to another. But we want, to, in fact, to describe uh, and to obtain mathematically uh, quasi-static transformation between non-equilibrium stationary states. Like, we have a system, a chain, we have two, two boundary conditions, thermostat at different temperature, and we change very slowly the, the temperature of the boundary. Uh, so this is, uh, sorry, this is uh, uh, the um, was inspiration by Lanfer, I said before, and there was also work by Jonas Lazzini on uh, 
and the and Claudio Landim and the other people, Bertini and the other people of the group from group, uh, where they study they they propose this uh, transformation, at least in the reversible case, in the in the framework of uh, of the um, of the, the macroscopic fluctuation theory. Uh, okay, let me, let, I, I want to, uh, we, we apply this to many systems, but I want to just to talk today only about the symmetry simple exclusion, just uh, not, not to disperse uh, uh, in a lot of, uh, of uh, different models. So this is a system where there is only one uh, uh, conserved quantities, the particle numbers, I mean, they're conserved in the bulk. Uh, let's take the symmetric case for the moment. That's a simple, much, much simpler case. And we consider the open system. So the particles, I mean, may, may, I think most of the people here are familiar with the, with the simple exclusion. The particle jumps with a ran symmetric random walk, uh, but they just uh, there is an exclusion. If I want to jump where it is occupied, cannot jump. And then I have a particle coming in and out at the boundary. Uh, and you see the time scale here is important. The typical time scale for this for the simple for the symmetric case is uh, if the system is big N is like N squared, it's diffusive. Particle will tend to diffuse, so it'll be typical N squared. But here we look uh, at time scale which is at a larger time. So this this you reflect this looking at the generator of the process. This is L and T at the generator of the process. And we look at, at a larger time scale that means we multiply in our time scale is beyond the diffusive time scale. So we multiply the generator by N2 plus alpha, and alpha is positive. The fact that alpha is positive means that we are uh, looking at the system uh, at a larger time scale than the diffusive time scale. So, so, so we expect the system to be basically in a, in a, in a stationary state, in, a, in this, uh, or in a, qua, in a quasi stationary state in this time scale. Um, so now this, this is the generator of the exclusion inside, which is defined here. This eta x x plus one means that we have exchange in the configuration eta the occupation site of x with x plus one. So this is a generator of the symmetry simple exclusion. And these are the generators of the uh, uh, of the generate the generator of the of, of the creation annihilation of the particle of the boundary. Uh, the, the boundaries are in contact with reservoirs that tends to have density rho minus on the left and rho plus on the right. And you see uh, I'm changing rho plus and rho minus with time t. So this uh, Densities at the boundary change, but change on this on the macroscopic time scale. The macroscopic time scale is uh, already the one uh, with uh, two to two plus alpha. So there is no no n uh, no n inside here. There is no depends on alpha. So all all the point that we have uh, we are pushing. So so this change on this time scale. Okay. So this is a uh, this is the way to say mathematically that we are changing slowly the the, the 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 boundaries but we, in fact we are putting ourselves in the time scale where we see the boundaries changing that clear okay and uh, it's not difficult to prove in this situation a low or large number that if you look at the uh, density uh, profile the empirical density profile uh, of the particles time t, I recall you, this is again the, the macroscopic time t, this will converge to a function rho bar y t, which is uh, 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 rho bar y t will be, if alpha is equal to zero, that is the typical hydrodynamic limit, that uh, is not the quasi-static scale, then you know that this is going to be the uh, diffusive equation with the uh, uh, Dirichlet boundary condition that depends on time and this change with the um, boundary condition which are time dependent and this is actually not not difficult to prove and it's not difficult to prove also that uh, uh, for alpha positive you have a quasi static uh, uh, aerodynamic limit that means uh, you converge to the straight line that goes from rho minus to rho plus that means solution of the Laplace equation with this boundary condition but the boundary condition depends on time and this is a 
typical uh, quasi static evolution. Okay, so, so uh, I mean, you have still to prove something, but you can apply duality methods or, uh, or uh, entropy production uh, methods, standard method to prove this. You can, you can find a proof of this in, the, in this paper with Anna De Masi in the Journal of Statistical Physics in 2015. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, this is about the quasi static behavior for the symmetry simple exclusion. Now, uh, if you look at the current, that's uh, the number of particles that jump uh, from uh, uh, x to x plus 1 uh, in uh, up to time t minus those that jump in the opposite side. So this is the total current up to time t. This is what you write here. And you typically expect to be of the order n1 plus alpha. Uh, now I don't want to spend time. Why? Why n1? If, if alpha was zero, uh, you will expect a current like one over n. Uh, yeah, we are in the, uh, the typical. Uh, uh, this is a typical uh, uh, Fourier law. So the current decreases with the size of the system like one over n. Uh, now, if I look at a larger time scale, of course there is uh, there is uh, uh, more particle flow, flow flowing through the system, but since it's symmetric, we'll be just adding uh, parameter alpha. The fact that it's alpha, not alpha over two, is also um, I mean, if you do the calculation, you will convince yourself that this is the right uh, right uh, uh, amount of particles that flows from one side to the other. If the current uh, and the point that uh, with this will not because of the conservation law this will be very rigid in the in the uh, quasi static time scale you will see just a constant current flow it will not depend on y and will be just equal to the time integral macroscopically when n goes to infinity converge to the integral of the macroscopic flux rho one minus rho which is constant in time, in fact, will be equal to rho minus minus rho plus, and integrated in time. And this will give you the macroscopic limit. So, so this is a, uh, this is all about uh, the symmetric case, at least for the quasi-static. You can study actually the large deviation about this. I mean, this is a large deviation for the symmetric simple exclusion, been uh, quite studied in other situation. But uh, in the quasi-static situation, uh, this is another work we did years ago with Anna De Masi, that you can ask, well, what's the probability to have a different current in this quasi-static time scale and, and, and have a different profile of density? And actually, this is, convert, this is uh, uh, of the order e to the minus n, 1 plus alpha. Uh, and you can compute explicitly the rate function the rate function, you can see that is uh, uh, this expression, uh, and you can see it's zero if uh, the derivative of that, that is the instantaneous current, is equal to the gradient of the density, or minus the gradient of the density. That's, uh, that's a quasi-static uh, situation. Uh, and is divided by, so, so the difference, or the, the sum, is what the price you pay um, uh, square, uh, the price you pay and it's divided by rho 1 minus rho. Uh, this is kind of similar to the functional that the Rida and uh, uh, the large deviation function that the Rida and Bodino uh, find for the uh, stationary, uh, the large deviation for the stationary, in the stationary state when, uh, uh, when the densities are fixed. But actually, the, no, it, it, it's, it's actually different, yes. Uh, sorry, I missed something. So, uh, how is this alpha chosen? I, I didn't uh, quite get that. Alpha alpha appears here in the alpha alpha is the time scale and the, the quasi static time scale. We are looking now at time scale of order uh, n two to two plus alpha two plus alpha instead of n two instead of the diffusive time scale. So alpha is uh, 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 alpha is one, is it? No, no, alpha, this is for any alpha. This, the, oh, the, can, the, it's a, it oh, depend, the, the functional does not depend on alpha. As long alpha is positive, the functional is this, and alpha appears in the rate here. Okay, so it depends on the time scale you want to look at. It, look at. Uh, it does not. 
as long you are in the quasi-static, as long alpha is positive, for any alpha positive, you have such uh, function. Okay, okay. It doesn't depend on alpha. And alpha is only appears here. If alpha is zero, then you have uh, the large deviation uh, for the symmetry simple, from the, from the dynamic limit for the symmetry simple extrusion, like the one I studied in my thesis with uh, Kipnis and Varadhan, and, uh, and then later with boundary condition with uh, uh, Lazinio, Landim, uh, Bertini, I studied later. Okay. okay. So is then the effect of this alpha is only to change the prefactor in the large deviation, or does it give the same? Yeah, the effect deviation? of the alpha, as long alpha is positive, is to is to change the 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 rate. Yes. But the large deviation function is exactly same as the theory Godin uh, and Derrida large deviation. It's, it, it formally yes, de facto no, because you see there is a time here. Yes. They have they, their functional is uh, um, it's, it's 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 a bit different because uh, you see in, in their case J can change uh, can change in in, in, uh, in space here J yeah. I cannot I cannot have uh, deviation where I see currents different currents in different times if I'm the quasi static yeah. time scale the current has always to be flat because it's, it's becomes yeah. it's a conservation law there's so many particles flowing in I cannot have uh, uh, the price that I have to pay to have more flux in you know, one point than in another point will be much higher than this really right so the without thing. the time integral the things inside is the same as theory but you know, yes, uh, yes and yes. then your change is that they itself now they are time dependent so you, now you have the integral over time okay yeah. okay and, and we don't have the depends on space and j and then of course they, are, they, are, they satisfy a uh, galavotti cohen fluctuation relation so you can change uh, the if, if you invert the current you have uh, such relation with the rate with the inverse current you want to see current on the other side uh, which gives you which gives you uh, an interesting uh, uh, effect if you just have uh, in the quasi-static case, but you want just to change, without changing the profile, just want to change the current, then uh, the price you pay is just equal to the sum of the relative entropy of rho minus respect to, to rho plus respect to rho minus and rho minus respect to rho plus integrated in time. I, I don't have a physical interpretation for this, but this is the cost for inverting fixed law in this uh, quasi-static case. Okay, um, so this is, this is all we know for the symmetric case. Things become more interesting for the asymmetric simple exclusion. This has been uh, uh, studied a lot. I mean, Tomo Hiro also has done very beautiful work on this. So let's, uh, let's, uh, 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 let's take now the asymmetric case. That means random walks now are asymmetric with the exclusion rule. And uh, just to fix the um, ideas, let's take uh, the, the, the main drift uh, uh, to be towards the right. Eh? Uh, so I take p bigger than 1 minus p, just to fix ideas. And then I call, uh, this is standard notation, I call alpha the rate uh, uh, to particles coming in on the left, gamma the rate of particle coming out, beta coming out, and delta coming in on the right. Okay. Um, and uh, so you, uh, you can, uh, uh, now the, you can make many choices of these four parameters. I mean, there's one parameter P that will keep it, and then there will be rates inside that we speed up. But then you can make different choice of the four parameters coming in and out of the boundaries. Uh, one uh, typical choice is the one that Liget introduced in 1975. This is a quite seminal paper uh, in which these are, these are rates uh, that basically uh, simulates the system like it is immersed in an infinite system where on the left uh, the particles are density rho minus and on the right the particle density rho plus and, uh, and are in equilibrium. Uh, in this case the rates uh, depends on uh, p, depends on the asymmetry. So these are different rates respect to the one, uh, different uh, reservoirs respect to the to the one uh, uh, we have considered before, a kind of non-reversible reservoirs. 
when physical reservoirs are typically something reversible that uh, we attach to the system. But now, uh, ligates, uh, ligate uh, boundaries are not, are kind of asymmetric, kind of something that simulates the asymmetry of, of, of the system outside uh, this finite system. The, the, um, the reason why I introduced these boundaries is uh, purely mathematical, in fact. Uh, these are the best boundaries. In, if, if you choose these rates, uh, the system looks really like uh, like a piece of an infinite system, and it's or, or, or not doesn't look, but at least approximate does the best approximation to the infinite system, which was what he was interested in this paper to study the asymmetric simple occlusion with the density rho minus at infinity on the left and the density rho plus at infinity on the right. Uh, let me call instead reversible reservoir boundaries, boundaries like I did before, with a rate, there's a parameter lambda minus, and then I just can put in rho minus and uh, uh, density with rho minus and rho plus. That means that without the mechanism inside, what the, 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 what the particle, what the, what the reservoir wants to do here is just to fix the density rho minus. And same thing here, rho plus. But you see, in this case, the um, the, um, these rates do not depend on p, do not depend on the internal dynamics. Okay. Uh, the effect of this, the macroscopic effect of these two uh, choice of boundary condition uh, if, uh, uh, affect uh, the boundary condition you will get on the hydrodynamic equation. Uh, so you have, uh, in fact, the the, the most the studied case, and in fact the only studied case really for in the macroscopic limit, is the ligate boundary. Uh, and this is a paper by Christophe Badoran, where he proved that now you take this, uh, this is a normal hydrodynamic limit. Now the system is asymmetric, so you have to rescale space and time in an hyperbolic way. It's like for the Euler equation that we've been talking yesterday. Uh, you rescale space and time and you want to converge to a solution of an hyperbolic equation. The hyperbolic equation is the Burgers equation, d t rho is dy j tilde rho, and uh, j tilde is the current, microscopic current. And uh, what you converge, you have a convergence in a certain weak sense to the entropic L infinity weak solution of this uh, Burgers equation, where there are two boundary conditions. Actually, the Badoran proves it for boundary condition which does not change in time. And uh, of course, you have to explain what does it mean that an hyperbolic equation satisfies two boundary conditions because the systems, the, the things looks. Um, Overdetermined, and uh, there is uh, a, like like there is an entro definition of entropy solution inside the system. There is also a, 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 an entropic uh, uh, condition for the boundary condition. Doesn't mean this, this, this. You have not to take this literally. You can have shocks that that uh, you can have shock that uh, uh, touch the boundary. And, uh, and, if, and rho is not continuous, and, uh, and doesn't mean that, this is, uh, that these are satisfied for real. I mean, I, I will explain maybe later. And, but anyway, there are, this has been studied in the literature, and there is a characterization of this boundary condition by Bardos, Leroux, and Delec, and, uh, and by Otto later on. And the definition of Otto is the most interesting for us. <clears throat> so basically, the boundary condition should give the right product, entropy production for the solution. And, um, and these, these results are only for uh, the ligate boundaries. For reversible boundaries, there is uh, now a very recent work. I mean, the last week, few weeks has been terminated by Lushu, where he can deal with reversible boundaries instead of ligate boundaries. But the price that you will see later is that you have to speed up uh, the rates at the boundaries of the of the of the reversible boundaries in order to obtain to, imp to impose such boundary conditions, and and but you converge to the same type of uh, of solution. The also the advantage of this that there will be time de for time dependent uh, uh, boundaries. So, but what I want to talk about is about the quasi-static dynamic limit. Now, 
we do it first with the ligate bundles, but in fact we deal we deal also with the other bundles. So let's take the ligate bundles. This is the paper with uh, Anna De Masi, Lushu, and Stefano Marchesani. So now we speed up time by n to the one plus alpha. I recall you for alpha equals zero. This is for alpha equals zero is the will be uh, the Burgers equation will be the usual aerodynamic limit. Now we look at a larger time scale, uh, and at the larger time scale we converge to, uh, um, to the solution of the entropic uh, L infinity weak solution of the quasi-static equation. Again, I have to explain what does it mean. This, this, means, that, this means that uh, the, the current has to be constant. I mean, you expect in the quasi-static equation that you will, you will see a, a constant current in space. may change in time, but but is in space, and the, and the rho should satisfy, in some sense, this boundary condition. Of course, this is not true. I mean, there will be there will be discontinuity, but the type of discontinuity you will see at the boundaries should be of a certain type. We can actually uh, uh, give uh, directly the, what, what, what is this entropic uh, weak solution of it. So this boundary condition satisfies the auto sense, and uh, we'll explain it uh, later. Uh, there is a condition here, alpha bigger than one half. This is technical. This is something we should uh, be able to eliminate. It should be true for any alpha positive, but somehow we have to accelerate alpha by one half. Not, uh, notice that alpha one half, we are still uh, far from the uh, diffusive time scale, which will be uh, alpha one or bigger uh, alpha yes alpha equal one or bigger than one then will be this will be two or bigger than two so that means that we are, not only we pass the Euler time scale but we arrive to the diffusive time scale and, and beyond uh, we are still we are still before the um, the diffusive time scale so we shouldn't see yet diffusive uh, terms appearing in here. Um, So for the reversible, this, this, this result is for the ligate boundaries. For reversible boundaries, uh, then uh, there is a price to pay. We have to uh, speed up the boundaries by sigma tilde n, where sigma tilde n should go to infinity. So not only we speed up time here, but we have to speed up also the boundaries in order to impose those boundary conditions. Uh, and there are various uh, conditions that appear here. Not only that, we have to speed up the in inside the system by sigma n, uh, um, by, by some sigma n. Sigma n over n should go to zero, so there shouldn't be diffusive terms appearing with respect to the asymmetric part. This is the this is the generator of the symmetric part. So basically, to the asymmetric diffusion, we add some uh, symmetric exchange. We had a lot of them, but not enough uh, to really see a uh, diffusive time scale. It's still, still the asymmetric simple exclusion is the dominate, dominating part. Uh, uh, but this will help in entropy creation to prove uh, the theorem. And we convert, to, uh, and under this condition, we have again convergence to the. Um, quasi static equation. So, what is the quasi static equation? Well, uh, the People, uh, okay, let, this, this, actually, these are the conditions that where Lushu obtains the Burgess equation for these reversible boundaries. Um, how, how this is defined, the quasi static, uh, the quasi -static solution of uh, the hyperbolic equation? Well, basically, you take uh, the idea is that you take uh, uh, this works for any convex uh, flux. You take uh, uh, the entropic solution of this problem here with an epsilon in front of uh, the time derivative, and as epsilon goes to zero, you can prove that there is a, there is a limit, and and you call this limit uh, quasi-static uh, solution of the of this problem here. Um, actually, this can be this is mathematical. Uh, that uh, completely mathematical, a uh, completely analytical uh, problem you can study from an analytic point of view. The, the solution we get from uh, the microscopic model is the same as we get from taking the limit from the hyperbolic equation, from this hyperbolic equation. 
and uh, how this is defined let me um, well you can you actually we can compute explicitly what this uh, uh, what this uh, uh, solution you can uh, uh, depending on Romain on the Romanos is bigger here m is equal one half in our case in the bar in the burgers case otherwise it's generally the maximum of the current and depending if you are uh, in um, in a situation where rho minus and is less than m and rho plus is less than rho minus star, so the minus star is the other term is one minus rho minus, uh, uh, you have uh, that the solution will be a constant equal rho minus. Otherwise, it will be rho plus, or or you have a situa situation this is the maximal maximal current phase where. Uh, uh, rho, rho bar will correspond to the maximum value, the, the, the value one half, uh, where the current is maximum. This is exactly what you have, uh, what you have uh, in uh, in uh, in the stationary state. I mean, Tom, Tomohiro is familiar with this. Uh, it's just the, the situation in the stationary state you just have in the quasi-static uh, evolution. Uh, and, uh, and, this, and, this, and, th and this is the explicit solution in this case of the of the of the uh, quasi-static equation. In fact, uh, you pro 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 yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, uh, there's one confusion. I mean, so these boundaries you are changing with time, right? There's time time dependent yes. boundaries. Yes. So the stationary state. I mean, so this is also a, uh, it's a time dependent. So what well, do you mean? Not, it, of course, it's not. A that's the point. That is not a stationary state. The profiles uh, we see at each instant of time are the same that will correspond to the stationary state. But we are not in the stationary state because we are changing the boundary condition. Right. Okay. So no, but you. So what do you mean by stationary? State? There's no stationary state in this case, right? No. No. Right. Okay. Uh... No, but somehow you are close to a stationary state at each instant of time. The distribution will not be the stationary state, but will not be too far away from the stationary state. So what the prof uh, so it's like the prof the profile will be exactly same if the uh, densities were fixed at uh, at those instantaneous values, is it? The prof sorry, the profile. The, let's say the density profile in the system. Uh, yeah. It's close yeah. to what it would have been if the it's like the exactly. yeah, yeah that's that's exactly what I'm saying. In fact, you can characterize it with this variational uh, principle, uh, which is the same. In the, in the time independent case in the stationary state is the same that uh, okay. uh, Tom Hero okay. knows in the for the stationary state that means in the uphill case in the downhill case you maximize the current downhill case means remember that here the drift uh, uh, goes to the right so downhill means that uh, the density on the right is bigger than the density on the the density on the left is bigger than the density on the right downhill so it means the drift uh, the gradient goes uh, as opposite sign that they drift downhill. And then the, uh, the, the, um, the density is the one who maximizes the current. In the uphill case, the density is the one who minimizes the current. And so, uh, in, fa in fact, uh, that's the way we obtain the limit that we show that, uh, that this variational principle is satisfied. So this, and this is uh, similar to the well studies in the stationary state when, uh, when rho plus minus are independent. And uh, the explicit solution by the Rida, Popov Schutz, and the Uchiyama, Sasamoto, Vadadi give, gives you similar, gives you the same uh, uh, variational principle. It's just this happens, this, you can use this, we it's not we don't we don't use any explicit uh, calculation here like in the in the stationary state people use this explicit uh, uh, expression for the stationary state here we just prove uh, uh, using more uh, entropy uh, entropy reduction argument and and coupling and dynamical coupling uh, the interesting case is when uh, 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 we are in the critical line the critical line is the situation in which you are uphill 
you are uphill and rho minus is equal to uh, rho plus is equal to one minus rho minus okay let me skip this this is just the characterization of the boundary condition um, Yeah, the critical line. Then, then you can have. Uh, then you have that the solution is not unique. The quasi-static solution is not unique because if rho minus is equal to one minus rho plus, uh, you can have uh, uh, any any solution with a shock in the middle. So you have here rho minus. You have here rho plus, which is one minus rho minus, and you can have a shock in the middle. In all the other cases, the shocks the shock will be or on the right or on the left. And you will see just one value rho minus or one value rho plus, except in the maximal phase in which you will see just uh, rho equal one half. Um, but uh, uh, in the in the critical case, you will have uh, uh, that you have uh, any, not anymore. I mean, you have uh, infinite many solution to the so to, to 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 the quasi-static equation, and uh, you know exactly. Um, which one to take, uh, which one will be the good one. And then at that point, the initial condition will be important. You know that uh, the shock, I mean, there's an, in the, at least in infinite dimension, this has been studied by Ferrari, the Masi, Prezuti, you know the shock will move diffusively. You move diffusively, and uh, so uh, you expect that if you look at the time scale, which is a diffusive time scale, you will see some some move, something moving, but before you don't see moving it. So, if I'm taking a quasi-static time scale when alpha is equal one, the shock will never move. So, so suppose that I'm doing a quasi-static transformation along the critical line when rho minus uh, is equal to rho plus. You're changing in time. Then I will never see, I, I, and, and I start with the shock in the middle of the system. Then I don't see the shock moving. Uh, in the other case. The, the shock, if, if I take alpha bigger than one, then the shock can have every, every solution, every solution between uh, any position. So the, the limit profile will be random. We not have a deterministic limit profile because uh, anything can happen, which is in fact what happens in the stationary state when you take the expectation, you will just, you will not see a constant density profile. In the stationary state, you see a, a, a straight line, this is computed in the, in the, in the first paper by the Reed and the others, and I'm sure it comes out also from the paper by Tomohiro, that you see a profile of density that is not constant. This is because you are averaging out over many limiting profiles that are random, but you don't have a low large number there. You just have a sovraposition of, 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 many, of many limit profiles. Uh, so this is actually, uh, in the critical line, you don't have really a quasi-static evolution. You have, uh, because you're going to start to have uh, uh, dependence on the conditional uh, thing. So, so that shows that how rich is the, is the situation. If I take alpha equal one, I, I will see it moving it, in fact, in this time scale. So this means that there's an, for alpha equal one, is a no quasi-static behavior. I, see, I don't see think quasi static i see i see i see the the, the system uh, moving moving uh, not in the i i also see, also see not not only the density changes quasi statically but also see uh, the shock moving inside in some in some sense but this is a conjecture I mean, actually the uh, the critical line for the moment uh, we are not able to deal mathematically okay uh, how much time um, i'm okay i've, I've uh, I have a bit of time, to, just a little time. I want to say something about the how these boundary conditions are, are characterized. Um, and you have this, 10, uh, 10 plus 20. 10 plus 10. 10 no? plus 20. 10 plus 20, okay. Well, it's a long time. No, I, I will use less time than that. So I want to say something about the, um, the way uh, boundary conditions are characterized. This is important. You know what are, um, you know, that the entropy solution for an hyperbolic equation are characterized by introducing this uh, lax entropy pair. Uh, so you know that these mathematicians talk, says uh, that every, every, every convex function, is the, they call it entropy, 
I'm sorry about that, but I mean, it's actually, actually this is uh, quite useful in uh, hyperbolic, uh, studying this hyperbolic equation. So an entropy pair is a convex function, S, uh, and a flux, and the relation, the fact that the Q is a flux for the convex function is written here. That means the derivative of Q has to be equal to the derivative of the flux times the derivative of the entropy. And uh, you say that rho is an entropic quasi-solution, quasi-static solution, if uh, um, this integral is positive. This is a, a, usually in the definition of entropic solution for the hyperbolic equation, you have as a time derivative here of, uh, of S. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, this is quasi-static, so there's no time derivative. Uh, you just have that somehow the flux uh, multiplied by the gradient of a function phi for a positive function phi. That means that the, the gradient of the flux has to be positive in some uh, integrated time. Uh, now, uh, this was introduced by Otto, I think, in this situation. This is a boundary entropy pair, uh, which uh, uh, is like an entropy and fl entropy flux uh, pair, but the results are depending on another parameter, another density w. And as a function of rho, they should look like an entropy pair. But then they must have this further property here. And then uh, this, is, this is the property that you have on the boundary. This is rho minus and rho plus. These are the boundary terms, the boundary condition you have. And the boundary conditions are satisfied in this sense that uh, basically the flux, you have, uh, you have a good sign for the flux of entropy. They have to flow outside the system. This is what, what, uh, what basically say the, the entropy flux should be, the entropy should flow outside the system. Uh, this, uh, this, this is how, how they are characterized. So this is the limit, some limit for rho minus and rho bar. For rho bar, this is a solution uh, taken inside. The limit has not to be equal to rho minus. Could be different, but should be up higher or lower depending on, uh, on the values of rho minus and rho plus in such a way that the entropy flux, the entropy flux outside the system and uh, so these are called them Otto boundary, and these are equivalent to the Bardos Nedelec uh, boundary. This is, a, I mean, this is a mathematical problem we always have in the dynamic limit. Uh, that uh, when we obtain the limit of this equation, these are kind of L infinity function, where and for L infinity function, uh, limits are not really well defined. And uh, while for bounded variation uh, function are well defined. Now, if you have a solution which is bounded variation, you can characterize this entropy flux at the boundary in the Bardos and Delec neural. Uh, in principle, we don't have uh, bounded variation function in the limit from the macroscopic system. We only know that they are bounded. Uh, and so we have to use this characterization, which actually uh, physically more interesting, and this is and this is a, something that we use we use uh, uh, from the as to characterize also from the microscopic uh, from the microscopic uh, system. In fact, the proof of the quasi-static dynamic limits is basically in three, in three steps. But the biggest step, surprising, is to prove that. Uh, when you are in equilibrium, that means you take rho minus equal to rho plus. So this is, let's say, is the quasi-static equilibrium. The two densities are equal, but they are changing in time. Then in this case, you have to prove that you don't have entropy fluxes. You are, the, the entropy fluxes are negligible in the limit. This is the hardest part. This is where we have to work uh, more. And then once you prove this, you, you can use a relatively standard coupling argument to show that the densities have to be inside uh, uh, rho minus and rho plus. And then, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, with the same coupling argument, you can show that they satisfy the variational, variational principle for the current that maximize within this interval, they must maximize the current in the, in the, up, in the downhill case and minimize in the uphill case. And the, so, so, so you just prove direct, we've just proved directly that they satisfy the, the variational principle. And we know that the solution of the variational principle is the solution of the quasi-static equation. OK. Uh, let me now, uh, uh, in the few minutes, 
left. I want to war I want to say something that we are doing more recently with Joel and with Joel Leibovitz and um, and uh, Thomas Komorowski, which is kind of the opposite uh, limit. Up to now, I talk about a limit where uh, the boundary condition change very slowly respect to the uh, to the system. Uh, um, to, to, to the typical uh, system. So it's a quasi-static limit. Now I want to, say, to take, again, boundary condition, but they, they change fast. They change on the microscopic time scale. So there may be some homogenization in the adrenomic limit. So, uh, so this is kind of a completely opposite limit respect to what I was doing before. Hmm? Uh, and, and let's take uh, uh, just one fix fix one example. So we take a chain of uh, pin oscillators. We put the Langevin thermostat on the on the on the right, and then I put the force uh, tension on the left. But the tension change in time. Let's take uh, something that changed periodically with period one. Hmm? And then inside there is a, the, there's just a Hamiltonian dynamics with the pinning. So, so we have position, QJ, velocities, PJ of the particle J, and uh, QJ the position, and PJ moves the, this is the Hamiltonian uh, evolution. This is the forcing on the, on the last particle, and this is the periodic forcing. So we are pushing up and down, up and down, up and down here. And then this is the action of the uh, thermostat on, the, on the, the heat bath on the right side. And actually, this inspired, I mean, by, I mean, Joel Luke said that it's one of the first papers of Joel. Look, look at, the, at the quotation. It's Annals of Physics, num number one, numero one, page 123, 1957. So it's a very, actually, it's a very interesting paper that Joel wrote uh, with Bergman. Uh, Bergman, I think, was his uh, uh, advisor. And uh, they were considering such, uh, such situation where the uh, boundary conditions, basically, that in that case, is a thermostat, uh, is, is boundary condition that acts on the whole, uh, the forcing that acts on the whole system, uh, it changes periodically in time. So again, uh, there is no stationary state, because things change in time, but there are periodic stationary state. You can, uh, um, periodic uh, stationary state is the stationary state, that means if you have the particles, uh, the, the, the system, is, uh, uh, is distributed with mu and t at time t plus one, uh, you have the same distribution, and this for every t. So it's uh, it's not stationary, but it's periodically stationary. It just repeats. I mean, once you start the system, you have the system in this in this uh, state. It just comes back with period one in this state. So you have it's, a, you have, it's basically a family of measure with t appertaining between zero and one. Uh, I recall you now. I ta I'm taking a period. Of course, we can change. We can change just for simplicity. I'm, I'm considering period equal to one to the forcing. So I'm just uh, adding force in, in there. And then you can ask, well, okay, okay, what are the properties of this um, periodic stationary state? Okay. Uh, as, as n goes to infinity. The existence is not a big problem. Basically, you have, you have a, a Markov process and uh, parameters to change in time. You can look that there, there are the similar, similar problem of existence and uniqueness you have for the stationary state you can use for the non-stationary state. So this is a, but this is a, a non-equilibrium periodic state stationary state. You, could, should, you shouldn't consider it as, as a periodic... Uh, I mean, if... if, if, if uh, if tau, if, if the forcing tau is constant, you know what is the equilibrium state. It will be a Gibbs measure with temperature, a canonical Gibbs measure with temperature T minus and tension tau. Hmm. But here, tension tau changes. So the canonical Gibbs, there will be no Gibbs measure describing this uh, periodic stationary state. Um, and there will be a flux, there will be a flux of energy. So you can define temperature, as the, let me define the average temperature. So I take uh, the average of the kinetic energy and the average in time. This is, uh, uh, the, let's call this temperature when the system of the atom in the position I, at uh, when the size is N. 
and let's call this Jn is the flux, the flux of energy in the system. And you have a negative flux of energy, so you will have a continuous. You are doing work on the side. This work, this flux, this uh, up, pushing up and down, even the period is zero, will push energy inside the system, which which will flow through the system, and the energy will go to towards the thermostat on the, on the left. So will, there will be, you can easily prove by entropy arguments uh, that uh, you have uh, this, uh, you can only have energy flowing to the, to the right. But actually what we expect uh, that as the size of the system goes to infinity, this station is, this periodic state is not stable, that you still have a, a Fourier law in the sense that uh, uh, the, gra the, the, the gradient, the increment of the temperature should be proportional by some coefficient dn to the current. But the current will not decrease with the, the size of the system, unlike in the usual Fourier law where the current decreases like 1 over n. Here the current will stay of order 1, which will imply that there will be the, the temperature will start to have a very steep uh, uh, very steep uh, uh, behavior and will ex eventually explode with order n. That means you have a system here and uh, you will expect a t minus here, but on the right hand side, maybe you can put this. So you have, uh, you have a temperature t minus typically on the right. So I'm, now I look at the macroscopic time scale. So this will be the interval zero one. And here I'm doing the work. And so I will have uh, a, a very, very steep, uh, and this, this will go, this, this temperature will go to infinity, so the system will not uh, stabilize. Of course, we expect now, uh, but uh, we haven't done all the calculation yet, that what are the, if we reduce the force of the boundary, what type of boundary condition, I think I expect some Neumann boundary condition on the right hand side for the for the temperature profile. So, uh, so this, what we have done with Joel and Thomas uh, Komorowski, that actually for the harmonic chain uh, with a random flip of velocity sign inside, uh, we take this exactly the chain that I described you, but I had I, I take it harmonic to in order to make. Uh, uh, boundary, uh, in order to make uh, possible to do some calculation, and we add some random flip or some uh, random velocity exchange to make it diffusive uh, or to help the diffusion. In this, in this case, we can prove actually that uh, the current, we can compute explicitly the current, and uh, the limit of the current is of order one, will not decrease, will be negative, will be strictly negative. Uh, will not decrease, and uh, so we, we really compute the limit as n goes to infinity of, j, of the current Jn will be some j strictly negative as explicitly uh, explicitly compute, and that the and, and that the and that the Tn will go to infinity according to this uh, Fourier law. Okay, and I think this is. Uh, um, this is, uh, I, can, I can stop here, I think I, I'm, I'm going beyond my, my allowed time. So this I want to show you some other type of time-dependent boundary condition which things are really high frequency instead of low frequency, instead of taking very, very slow respect to the dynamic time scale. Here we are keeping the same time scale as the microscopic dynamics. Okay, thank you very much, I can stop here. Okay, uh, th th thanks a lot, uh, Stefano, for the very uh, nice uh, talk. Uh, so, uh, uh, questions? Uh, yeah, Tomo, go ahead. Thank you for the very nice talk, Stefano. Uh, I have maybe a few simple questions. So first, as you started as about the first part of this quasi-static case. So you started from the symmetric case and then moved on to the asymmetric case. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you also study kind of uh, intermediate behavior, like uh, considering weakly asymmetric case. No, no, we didn't. Uh, I think it's possible just uh, uh, 
possible and will be interesting to study some intermediate case in which uh, KPZ equation uh, will be relevant, for example, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but uh, you see, Tomio, I'm, I'm very scared of KPZ equation. There are so many good people <laughs> working on that. <laughs> but uh, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm looking for some expert like <laughs> to, to, to be in that case. Because, yes, yes, in effect, in effect, in that case, it can give, uh, it's very interesting, uh, Tomio, because uh, uh, it can give kind of a quasi static uh, KPZ equation should come out. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Of course, we studied in the uh, symmetric, I didn't say that, in the symmetric case, uh, in the paper with Anna, the first paper with Anna, we also studied the fluctuation. There, the fluctuation, the usual Gaussian fluctuation, the uh, austin Wunenbeck fluctuation, and they have a quasi static uh, uh, fluctuation. I mean, you have the austin Wunenbeck and the parameters of the austin Wunenbeck change in time uh, in a quasi static way. Um, but uh, we didn't attempt to do such thing for the asymmetric case because we know that there is <laughs> quite diff some difficulties, <laughs> even even the non quasi static case. But may may maybe the quasi static is easier. Uh, yeah, maybe mm -hmm. could be could be easier because, uh, for example, the the um, the proof kind of different uh, for the for this for the asymmetric for the Burgess equation. Uh, Quasi-static solution of the Burgess equation is a much simpler object. It's just a one-shot possible if you have it, uh, and uh, so it's, it's it's an easier it's an easier. Uh, I mean, you 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 know you have more control of what you are converging to. You know what you are converging to. So mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what happened for the KPZ. I really didn't think about that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Three uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Stefano. So uh, you showed that uh, for the case of symmetric case, you have the large deviations for the current. Now, uh, in the case of asymmetric, there was these results of Alexander Lazarescu and Kihon, uh, where they had the open ASIP and the uh, results for large deviation when the coupling is same. Like, uh, But in your case, would that be, a, again, a generalization where it would be a one more integral over time? Actually, actually, I don't, I don't know the work uh, you're talking about. I would be very interested to see it. And what I, I know, see. what I know is the work of uh, Jensen Varadan. I mean, for the asymmetric simple exclusion, and you will look at the deviation. That's something we wanted to study. We want to look at the last deviation uh, mm -hmm. from the dynamic limit, and then what they proved uh, without the boundary condition, without the boundary condition. Uh, uh, the usual uh, or periodic or infinite uh, system, I don't remember. They, they show that uh, uh, the deviation you can have, um, the possible deviation e to the minus n, are uh, due to solution that uh, solution of Burgess equation which are non entropic. Uh, if they are non entropic, there is an en a positive entropy production which makes them non entropic, and this positive entropy production is the price you pay. In the large division, the gives you the functional uh, in the large division. Now, um, the, with the boundary condition, this uh, uh, has been studied by um, this has been generalized in the dynamic limit by uh, Badoran again. But the, in the quasi static will, situation will become a bit more complicated. Uh, uh, but I, I don't know the, the papers you were talking about. These are these are paper for the large deviation for the stationary state. Yes, uh, ah, for, for open stationary. ASIP. Uh, um, yeah, for the stationary state, open ASIP. Uh, I can send you uh, some of these papers okay. that uh, is from Kion and last. And I have one more question. May I ask? Yes. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned, uh, so there was these other works of um, by Patricia and Cedric Bernada where they looked at weak coupling, where the rates of the coupling, uh, not they don't change the density at the boundary, but the couplings become slow. Yeah, and okay. So that's, that's a very different limit. In that case, uh, making it, I mean, basically they interpolate between uh, no coupling at all, which gives you yeah. normal boundary conditions. Exactly. 
and the normal coupling which give you Dirichlet boundary condition type. Right. So if you play with this parameter, you can get these Robin boundary conditions, which are yeah. something in between uh, Neumann and uh, yeah, depending on which power you yeah. Yes, coupling. Yes, yes. So this this uh, this uh, uh, are more uh, let's say classical aerodynamic limits where you are playing around with the boundary conditions between different boundary mm -hmm. conditions, but they don't uh, speed up the dynamic here. Instead, we slow, we don't make the coupling weak. In fact, even uh, we make it even stronger sometimes. It's just the time change of the coupling. The time scale mm -hmm. of the coupling is slow. Yeah. But yes. the coupling is strong. Coupling is still strong. So all the boundary conditions remain as Dirichlet. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically a plane of Dirichlet. We, are, we don't see any Neumann condition. Yeah, but you said towards the very end, you mentioned something about Neumann boundary conditions. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, okay, this is, this is a very speculative towards the end. Let's say here I'm saying that everything is exploding. Uh, this is the, uh, the last, uh, last thing. Every, 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 with, with Joel and... Uh, yeah. Joy. Uh, everything is exploding. So it's exploding. What does it mean? We are doing too much work. We are doing too much work. Uh, so the idea is uh, let's reduce the work. I put the uh, work of the order or oh, something up in here. It doesn't work anymore. Uh, uh, work uh, of the time of order one over n. So I reduce the amount of work instead, instead to make a lot of uh, I make the fluctuation. Yes, the same frequency. But the ampli, I reduce the amplitude of the of the of the of the work I do. So still, there will be a finite amount of uh, of energy coming in, but the energy coming in will be of order one over n. So we'll make a current of order one over n, and we'll make things finite again. But then the question is, what kind of boundary condition are we have on the on the right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't I don't want to put my hand on the fire because that. I'm doing those calculations and I'm this, 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 I wanted to say something okay. about fast but, but you but, but, but you that, but that, I really, if if, yeah. if we actually if we do a different limit so we do the dynamic limit with uh, uh, a very with a, a, a period macroscopic period then we get macroscopic equation like heat equation with this boundary condition and then we do the homogenization on this boundary condition on the macroscopic equation. Then we get this Neumann boundary condition. I'm not sure that the limit can be exchanged. Okay. The dynamic limit with the high frequency limit. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a question by, I think, Rahul. Uh, yeah, maybe I missed this, but. Uh, so usually in equilibrium, when you're changing parameters, there's a difference between when you're changing parameters within a phase and whether when you're going across a critical point, because then the relaxation exponent changes. You get a different set. So if in, in the ACIP, if I go across the critical line, when I'm changing my boundary parameter, won't it affect the relaxation? Okay, I, I, sorry, I don't hear you well, but I guess your question is about, I mean, I talk about uh, if I do quasi-static changes along the critical line, now you say, what if I cross the critical line in my quasi-static? Yeah. Is that your yeah. question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think, uh, uh, no, there is one thing, the way we obtain the equation is kind of weak in time. So if I just cross for just one instant of time, that yeah. the, the, it doesn't matter because it's just one moment in time, which I don't care what's happening exactly at that spot. Um, if I get inside from outside, uh, it's not clear. It's not clear what kind of, uh, wh wh where do I have to put the shock? I have, uh, I have, uh, once I'm inside the critical line, I have infinitely many solutions. I know what happened to the current that we can prove, that we have proven. The current will be that, will be the, the current that I must have. But, uh, but what, uh, what is the profile? Maybe what one gets is just that you don't get a low large number. You, don't, you just get um, 
a sovraposition of many different profiles if alpha is bigger than one. If alpha is less than one, if alpha is less than one, uh, I really don't know. Because uh, I, I, the shock should be, when, where the shock is, will stay, because uh, in this time scale, the shock doesn't move, and uh, will be something random. Okay. So, depending, depending on, on many parts. Yeah, I, I was wondering where we don't we don't have a exactly mathematical statement about what happened crossing from outside the, the critical line. Yeah, because I was wondering if there is a way to use your method to study coarsening within, you know, when you cross when you quench across the transition. So study start... coarsening. Uh, to study coarsening when you quench across the critical line. Um, I'm sorry, maybe I should write it. To study. Well, we we. Well, I don't know. I, I cannot. I cannot hear you well. So uh, yeah, he's put it down. Coarsening. Uh, okay. Uh, it's down there in the. Study coarsening when you quench across the critical line. Uh, yes, I, we we don't have, we don't have a way to control that. Yes, yeah. Okay, so we still have three minutes. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah, Tomohiro. So then let me ask one more question, a little more technical one. So so today you didn't really explain your proof, I think, for the quasi-static mm -hmm. limit. But uh, when you give a proof, do you use information about a stationary measure Use in terms no. of a matrix? No, no. Oh. not at all. We completely avoid to talk about stationary measure. We look, uh, the idea is that we look at... Uh, Entropy, uh, this entropy uh, couple, mm -hmm. entropy pair, boundary entropy mm -hmm. pair, and we look them on the microscopic scale, and we show that mm -hmm. when we are in equilibrium, that means uh, rho minus rho plus, uh, plus, even if they depend on time, when they depend, if they, if they don't depend on time, you are in equilibrium. There's nothing to prove. <laughs> you know, you know what equilibrium is, problem measure. But when you change in time, then uh, things are not anymore in equilibrium, but you'll be closer to equilibrium. And what we must prove there is that entropy fluxes are negligible there in the limit. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, just, uh, we, we go on with the calculation. And then once you prove that, then we go to the different densities using coupling. Mm. And showing that okay, they provide that to be like that. But we never, we never um, have to work with the stationary state, which will be very complicated object, as you know. Right, right, right. Sounds kind of interesting. So my impression has been that uh, usually, when when you know probabilists consider hydrodynamics and fluctuations and so, and so on, usually they need information about the stationary measure. But uh, if you you are these uh, new techniques work, so then maybe one can consider more complicated systems with complicated stationary measure. Do you well, think? Well, uh, uh, usually the techniques like uh, entropy methods and so on, you need to, to know the equilibrium measure. Right. That's important. That, that's we, 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 we need. That certainly we use the equilibrium measure, uh, that they are product oh. measure. The stationary measure, uh, we always kind of avoid them. <laughs> Implicitly, because now that, uh, that uh, we, we, don't, we have little control. We usually, in fact, sometimes use the equilibrium measure and large deviation and the entropy in order to have information on the non stationary, on the, on the non equilibrium stationary measure. Except in those lucky circumstances, like yours, or the read, etc., when you can do explicit calculation. But these are uh, kind of uh, uh, particular case, like uh, the the 
asymmetric simple exclusion. In fact, this, I mean, this method that we have, in principle, we can work also, I mean, this, uh, you see here that possible development of multiple conservation law, quasi-static hyperbolic yeah. system of equation, the system with chain, chain of oscillators with thermostat mm -hmm. and so on, when we have uh, more energy and, uh, and uh, volume stretch conserved and so on. Certainly things where we cannot have uh, explicit uh, calculation, but, uh, but this uh, entropy mm -hmm. method more wow. flexible in a way. Okay, very yeah, interesting, thank you. Uh, so, so Stefan, I had just uh, one question. So, in the uh, in the uh, oscillator chain, I mean, so the uh, instead of a force uh, very uh, uh, for time dependent force, uh, like uh, if you wanted to do something analogous to the uh, particle case, I mean, you do probably a temperature oscillation, right, at both ends, let's say, or at one end. Uh, so for some Tem process, temperature, like, temp different temperature both ends, yes. Yeah, yeah, and then oscillating temperatures. So for uh, something like the velocity flip process, where you know the hydrodynamic equations exactly, I mean, is that something which is kind of uh, easy to do within the hydrodynamic description? Uh... In the dynamic description, yes, that means if you change, uh, if they oscillate, if the oscillation are on the macroscopic scale, on the microscopic scale, there will be some homogenization that actually haven't studied it. Yes, that's that was another possible uh, limit. Take take uh, the temperature fluctuating, but somehow uh, I wanted to start uh, a Joel. <laughs> so looking checking what happened with the force change this is more more uh, something you can control physically they're changing to a fluctuating force more than a fluctuating temperature but fluctuating temperature will be also interesting anyway the point that uh, one interesting point in this uh, thing is that uh, you see here you have uh, um, you have uh, uh, somehow temperature t minus and here you're doing work and what you will see typically microscopic that you have a higher temperature in the place where you do the work than um, the temperature of the thermostat uh, this fact that you have a higher temperature here is kind of an interesting thing so it's, uh, in fact the whole thing started with um, you are saying that this is kind of a non-equilibrium phenomena that happens like when in biology, like in the mitochondria. Like now they measure the temperature in the surface of the mitochondrium and they find that, that it's 50, almost 50 degrees, while normal temperature in the body is uh, 37, 37, 36. And somehow this must be some the mitochondria, some work going on and some high temperature up in there. And that's to explain uh, situation where st stationary higher temperature appears respect to the temperature of the reservoir, just because there is some work there. It's totally obvious uh, in, physically, but mathematically uh, to prove something there. Okay, okay so uh, Aritra, you can uh, uh, talk to Stefano maybe at that time. So we'll now close and uh, we'll start in, I think, uh, six minutes.